What is up guys and welcome back to another cruise paladins guides today We are going to be doing a guide on willow. It should be pretty good But before we start I'd let, like to let you know guys that I am very very appreciative of the recent support Also, I'm sorry. It's been a while since the last guide. I'm really busy with school and everything So to be honest this year, you know, they're probably I'll try try my best to get at least one guide out every you know three to four weeks so that'll be my goal uh, but thanks for all the support guys uh, and let's get into it so this is going to be the newest guide for willow and she's a real spammer as you guys might know um the fairy has seen a very prominent rise in use over the past few patches and today we are going to be covering some top tips and useful information for her so it's been a while as i say i have been really busy so we're going to start off with the ability overview. This is going to be a quick run through through Willow's abilities, when to use them and how to maximise their impact. First of all, we've got her Wand of Overgrowth, which is a bit of an odd name for a primary. Of course, she is a blaster, which means she is very valuable. Willow's primary fire deals 500 damage every 0.75 seconds. A very kind of underwhelming damage value than, you know, her other blaster counterparts. However, she does have one of, if not the biggest, blast radius of the primary fires. Um, the one travels in a straight projectile with no damage fall off, making it perfect for long range encounters. This makes Willow viable on a, lar on a number of larger maps such as Timber Mill. If you've seen the Drogo's Guide, which if you haven't, there'll be a link down in the description, you'll know that it becomes much easier to hit shots when above targets, so as Willow always try to contest and spam from the high ground. This is also important when analysing her effectiveness on maps. Each shot will charge you 1-4% to ultimate charge, so Willow's ultimate can be very easily charged using just your primary. There are some more tips on using this primary in the hints and tips section later on. Next up we have Dead Zone, a fairly controversial and possibly even infamous ability. Dead Zone takes course right to the next level. A large 5 second area is created that blocks all healing when inside and for 2 seconds after exiting. This is literally every support's worst nightmare as it acts as a direct counter to literally every healer, especially against the ever more prevalent Solar Blessing. Dead Zone is by far most effective on tanks during the point fight, allowing your team to to easily burst them down and claim victory. Not to mention, many players are a little dumb when it comes to exiting the area. You know, they love to just stand in it. On the other hand, with the current meta talent, Deadson is placed on an even higher level and can be used very effectively in 1v1s. Next up we have Seedlings, uh, with a 15 second cooldown, and you've got to remember that both these abilities are also Blast. Although potentially a bit underwhelming on the damage side of things, Seedling acts as another zone control tool for Willow. The ability is most useful on point and chokes, however it doesn't need too much for. I just like to chuck it where you seem to, you know, have lots of people grouping. Sometimes it'll pick you up a free kill or do a little bit of damage, or just kill the person that's just killed you in a fight sometimes. It can come in pretty handy. Next up we have Flutter. A bit more down to earth than you'd expect from, from like a butterfly's movement ability to be. Flutter is a downgraded Drogo's Thrust. It allows Willow to access high ground she so very much needs and it can be used effectively in a duel to confuse your opponent. Not to mention the powerful loadout card that allows you to gain damage reduction after fluttering called Sprightly. The ability can be made much more useful. I would recommend doing some practice with this ability since the controls for the direction can be a little odd so just get a hand of it in the shooting range or just play some you know TDM or something to get that going. Finally, for her abilities, we have Faith Light, her ultimate. A really powerful ultimate in the right circumstances, lasting 10 seconds, which is a very, you know, lengthy uh, time limit for your ult. It can be really powerful. Whether this has just slipped under my radar or everyone's, it seems the controls for Faith Light were made much more user friendly a couple of patches ago. This ultimate allows you to put out massive damage output onto enemies from above, ignoring the shields that can't be moved up and wreaking havoc havoc on the back line of the enemy team. Not to mention, it serves as a great distraction if you have multiple enemies trying to pick you off from the sky. It's literally, you know, if there's three of them trying to hit you in the sky, your team can push in, making space, etc. 
However, if the enemy team does have, you know, a load of hit scans, especially Androxus or snipers, the ultimate can turn into a bit of a death sentence. I would always recommend targeting them down first, then going for other targets. Another tip is to try and flutter then ult while holding spacebar. If you do it right, as seen in the clip in the background, especially if you have bonus movement speed from something, you will gain a lot of extra momentum, which makes dealing with enemies a lot easier. On to the talent section, which we're just going to be discussing which talents are most viable and which are fit for different situations. Unlike the other champions we have gone through recently, Willow has a very unbalanced talent use as of the current patch. Scorched Earth. Dead Zone damages shields for 50% of their maximum health per second, and its cooldown is reduced by 3 seconds. I don't think I've ever seen someone use this card. As sad as it is, the card kind of just overlaps. Rekka can be used on Willow due to her inbuilt Dead Zone cauterize, so this card becomes kind of unnecessary. On top of that, it's pretty rare that the enemy frontlines will just stand in the dead zone, unless you're in pretty low tiers, since they need to get the healing anyway. Ultimately, this means that the card is unlikely to see much light of day. I would suggest making this card affect deployables and possibly even a small damage over time effect to players. If not, make it a flutter related talent. I think that would improve Willow's talent usage a lot. Next up, we have Blast Flower. Targets hit by your weapon shots take 100 additional damage from you, stacking up to three times. A close second to Nightshade, Blast Flower can be pretty decent. I'd only really recommend running it when you're a solo damage up against at least two tanks, where you could just spam from the high ground uncontested. Due to its niche situational use in this regard, it can't really compete with Nightshade when going up in 1v1s. I'd recommend trying to find a good situation to use this talent and give it a try. It might suit your playstyle, you know, a bit more reserved really well. Don't forget, you still have a dead zone, it just doesn't do 800 damage. Next up, we have Nightshade. Dead Zone now deals 800 damage when the initial explosion hits. Currently by far the meta talent, Nightshade gives Willow the quick burst that makes champions viable in the current but of course hated burst meta. You can shoot a normal shot and nightshade in quick succession for a 1300 damage burst. On top of the negation of healing, this basically makes Willow ideal for 1v1s or for destroying grouped up tanks on point. With the loadout mentioned below, you can get resets upon kills making chain spamming easy. Overall, just a very solid talent that makes up a big difference to your playstyle, allowing you to be a bit more aggressive and flank a little bit more. A suggested combo for 1v1s is to flutter up, then shoot down a shot and nightshade. This will give a nice chunk of the enemy's health to you. Scorn. Increase the damage of each seedling by 350 and reduce the fuse time by 25%. Uh, it can be quite fun when playing with a particular loadout, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. There's little value that can be gathered. For lots of point blast damage, you're better off with blast flare and for everything else, nightshade. The only time you might want scorn in casual is to mess around or just destroy enemies who like to stand in chokes. Might work quite well with a heavy slow or cripple if you have an Anara, say too. Next up we have loadouts. Now I'm just going to put these on screen, but I basically only have two kind of loadouts, one for Blast Flower and one for Nightshade, that you will also be able to find one for Scorn. The only thing I don't have one for is um, of course uh, Scorched Earth. However, if you do want this, I guess it's just kind of the same little bit of theory as Nightshade, maybe add some extra dead zone time on that. Next up we have itemization. These are just some general notes on what to purchase with credits. It's going to just give you some good idea of what to buy. Uh, obviously these are subjective, my personal opinion, and can change depending on the situation. Let me know what you guys like to buy on Willow down below. And by the way guys, the item graphic you can see on screen, a tick will represent uh, like it's a good buy, a heart a wonderful buy, um, I like to get it most of the time, and an orange circle, a situational, and you can guess across means i wouldn't really recommend it what you should buy for willow early game as willow already has inbuilt cauterize similarly to Liam, 
and it's fine if you buy some other items. I normally recommend Wrecker to level 2 or 3 initially. However, if the enemy team has no shields but a powerful healer and Sayonara, it might still be an idea to pick up Quarter Eyes. Late game, if neither Wrecker or Quarter Eyes are needed, I would recommend picking up Haven. Willow is countered by hit scans like Liana and Androxus, so having a level 2 in Haven really makes winning those fights just a little bit easier. On some maps, especially if they are lacking a good hit scan player, morale boost is the go to pickup. For example, Ascension Peak, I know that's a really powerful map, especially in, you know, higher level play, if you can flutter up and take control of the main dome area. Faithlight already charges really quickly, so having morale boost basically means you can just spam out this ultimate even more. This is very helpful for putting aerial pressure on the enemies and allowing your team to push through while they are distracted. Other than that, what you buy is mainly your choice. I personally like to go with Cauterized Wrecker, then Haven, then Morale Boost, or something along those lines, depending on the situation. Next up, we have some hints and tips. These are just some general tips on how to use Willow and some special circumstances. As mentioned in the abilities section, Willow thrives on high ground. She could put out insane spam and damage if she is left undisturbed. This means while playing the Butterfly, you want to try and take control of this high ground as much as humanely possible. Another nice tip is to flutter directly up, then up while holding spacebar, as mentioned in the faith light section. This will allow you to gain a nifty speed boost from the momentum, and if you do have a healer that adds like movement speed to you, uh, it will actually kind of bug out and allow you to go even faster, kind of like rock ult. On this note, it's important to remember that fluttering while facing a wall will boost the height of your flutter. This is crucial when trying to get up onto some areas of maps. When in a ground 1v1 or team fight, I would recommend aiming at the ground below the person or their feet, especially in close quarters. This will mean you hit a much larger percentage of your shots and they can't really strafe them. It also makes hitting the shot nightshade combo a lot easier. Similarly, you can flutter directly above people's heads and shoot down on them. This is disorientating for them and sometimes makes or breaks the fight. Next up we have counter and willow. This is actually a new section that I thought I'd add. I saw a couple of suggestions, so thank you to all of you guys that have. And by the way, guys, I'm thinking maybe doing some kind of like weekly or I guess episode, um, you know, kind of comment intake. So I'll, you know, show a comment and you guys can vote on whether you like the idea to contribute it to the series. So if you guys do have any suggestions, leave them down below. Willow is alike to Drogo's in many ways. I would say the easiest way to counter her is with hit scans. When you ult, a Leon can use all her abilities to quickly burst you down before you can do so much. Androxus can also dash up to your height and burst you down extremely quickly, especially with that stupid punch of his. By the way guys, I've been playing a ton of Andro recently. He is so busted. It's also very hard to hit him at this height. Of course, the same could be said for the snipers. However, unless you aren't spamming them, it's kind of, you know, a little bit hard for them to land a shot since their scream will, you know, bump up when your hit shots hit them. So try and, you know, target them down first. Any champion with lots of aerial mobility are generally decent at dealing with Willow. They can contest high ground, which is vital in shutting her down and stopping her from spamming your entire team out, and also avoid her ultimate. This includes most of the flank class, unless the Willow has Nightshade up, she is pretty damn easy to kill as a flank. Except, you know, there's always going to be someone there, a Fury to stun you, and the like. Ranked. Willow and ranked when she is banned, who she might counter, and I guess who counters her? Willow is considered a very powerful force. Depending on the map, she is almost always picked or banned. I'd say she's in a similar state to Leon. If the enemy team already has, say, a Leon or Androxus, it might not be the greatest idea to pick Willow. Additionally, some maps, for example, Ice Mines or Frozen Guard, are really not great for her. In general, she's also better against double tanks that have shields in particular like Fernando, Makoa, Barrack. Arguably, the biggest thing to look for when picking Willow is the enemy support. Furious Solar Blessing is made useless by Willow due to the power of her dead zone. Yin is also pretty weak due to her kind of area-based heals against the Fae. 
Overall, I would suggest trying to pick Willow up first or second pick. Tanks do take priority if there are still powerful ones up, but you can kind of, you know, risk it a little bit and pick her up, especially if they're going for something like a Furia and Onara combo. And one of her really powerful maps, which you will just discover from playing on them, to name a few, uh, you know, Timber Mill, Serpent Beach, they're both really good maps for her, and Jackie Falls for that matter. Go ahead and give her the ban, or if you're trying to run a really a healing heavy team with like a Torvald as well, where you don't want your shields to be busted, then another good opportunity to ban her. Alrighty guys, well hopefully this guide's been an alright length. I will say to you guys that it does take ages to make these guides. You know, all the different parts, the steam, the editing, the recording, the writing of the guide, um, and also the thumbnail, just all of it takes a while. So again, I do apologize, but hopefully, you know, it's going well. We might actually reach a thousand subs after this video. So if we do, thank you, a massive thank you to you guys. I might even do some kind of skin giveaway. Uh, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.